British luxury jeweler, Boodles, has been in business for over 200 years. It now sells some of the most high-end jewellery in the world. <laughs> Whether it's a £2,000 ring or a million-pound necklace, Boodles has a reputation for extraordinary designs made from perfect gemstones. Eight carat. Oh, my God. It's a big charm for that. <laughs> it's 1.1 million. Is yeah. <gasps> Their client list includes wealthy diamond connoisseurs and well-known celebrities. I, I love them, you know, and I look at them a lot. And gives me a lot of pleasure. Does that make me shallow? Now, as they set out to make their most expensive suite of jewellery ever, with a multi-million pound price tag, we meet the people striving for diamond-studded perfection. It can be quite stressful. These stones are like one and a half million. If you were to drop that and break it, it would be a serious problem. There was a sense of, gosh, we have never done something like this before. When you see something special, you know, you have to go for it. You know, it's in us, we just want to be perfect. Boodles has nine boutique shops throughout the country, including an exclusive flagship store on London's Bond Street. This 215-year-old business is entirely owned and run by one family, the Wainwrights. The chairman, Nicholas Wainwright, is the fifth generation of the family to run Boodles and the man who took them into the major league. 40, 50 years ago, we were a, a lovely county jewellers uh, selling silver plate clocks. Oh, God help us. All used to stop, nightmare. But we realised if we wanted to survive, and succeed, we realized we had to focus, and we decided we understood jewelry. We understood gemstones, and we understood jewelry. But the future of the business may now lie with Nicholas's son, Jody. It's his responsibility to hunt down the perfect gemstones to keep Boodle's customers hooked. With my ability to see what's out there and what's being produced, some things when they're really exciting and special and you know you're not going to see another one, certainly not for a long time, that, that does make it difficult to sell it. <laughs> but we want to sell it, that's what we're here for. That's a bright little stone. It's got that sort of fox's glacier mint look to it. You just feel like popping it in and having a little suck. Right. After 30 years in the business, managing director, Jody's uncle, Michael, is as excited by his jewellery as he'd like his customers to be. This is a new ring. I love this ring. It's an aquamarine. I love aquas. I love blue. This, of course, is our rain dance ring, which is in the V&A Museum. I think it's just a stunning design. I love diamonds. I love yellow diamonds. I love pink diamonds. I mean, that is just so pretty. It's just a, a great design. This, let me show you this yellow Marquise diamond. We're asking um, over a million pounds for this ring. Um, it is really a beautiful um, yellow diamond, so um, it's actually quite a good buy for somebody. A lot of girls um, like diamonds, and some girls absolutely adore them, and those are the girls we're after. <laughs> But even high-end jewellery doesn't sell itself. Whether they're spending 2,000 or 200,000 pounds, from the moment a customer visits Boodles, they're seduced by a very particular approach to customer service. A customer's got to come in and feel like they're special and they're the only person when they've come into the shop, so it needs to be tip-top. Champagne in the fridge, wine in the fridge, anything, anything a customer would want. Hello, <laughs> how are you? I'm very well, thank you. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Housewife and lady of leisure, Nikki, has been coming to see Adam at Boodle's exclusive shop in the Savoy Hotel for five years. Oh, that's darning. And again, it's a one-off. Uh, I think it's 28 and a half thousand. Oh. I can't 
can't tell you how beautiful that is because it's so just beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? How much would I be paying for this? 130,000? I don't think that that's unreasonable. Oh. She feels at home naturally here. It's just a very easy relationship. Oh, no. We chat about her kids, about my life, about her life, her husband, and we both enjoy diving as well. And then in the mix of things, I'll bring out jewellery or one of my colleagues will bring out jewellery and put it in front of her. There's a proper cocktail ring. I mean, you stand there and look fabulous yes. and have someone serve you drinks. Yes, it's a, it's a Liz Taylor ring. Yeah. Look at that from the side. It's just gorgeous. With nine shops holding tens of millions of pounds worth of stock, Boodles has a fair few sales to make. But customers with the means to buy this type of jewellery aren't found on the average high street. With a, a luxury brand like ours, you don't want to put yourself everywhere. Exclusivity is key. Um, so we have adverts in very choice magazines. Um, so you won't see us everywhere. Um, but a lot of what we do is word of mouth. It's a lot of recommendations and that's kind of how we work. To make sure the right people are talking about them, Boodles hosts some of the most glamorous parties in Britain. One of their biggest events is the high society Boodles Boxing Ball. You just pile in with your friends, have loads of That's the photo of it? Yeah. At London's exclusive Grosvenor House Hotel, painstaking preparations have been underway since 5.30 a.m. Cleaners have been set to work, jewellery meticulously laid out, and the normal red carpet replaced by one in Boodles' perfect pink. Right up to the last minute, the Boodles team are making final adjustments. Well, I'm just sorting out the table plan, yeah. which I've thought about. It's all in here. The carefully hand-picked guest list includes those who might just be the next generation of Boodles' top clients. We're very good at engaging with people, and um, it's up to us to, to spot the people who might like jewellery one day people actually who have an addiction or who love jewellery or the wives really enjoy wearing jewellery and they are, they are very valuable to us. On a night like this, Boodles hopes to get extra publicity by lending something eye-catching to a celebrity client. I'm wearing Boodles vintage lace um, necklace, earrings and matching bracelets, which I love. I'm so girly and this is just, to me, just so classic yet statement. The first year it happened, about six or seven years ago, in the Monday papers, they were actually full of pictures of the royal princes and Kate. It was their first sort of outing in public after they left St Andrews. So it's absolutely the best publicity you could ever have. PR's lovely and it helps business, but you've got to sell things, haven't you? Do people want your product? Do people want your jewellery? It's a very, very competitive world. It's like playing football in the Premier Division. You know, there, there's some big players. Last year, Boodle's turnover was more than £50 million. But that's not enough for this family business. Morning, morning. Jody wants to attract a new level of super rich customers. That means bigger, more perfect stones with incredible price tags. I love emeralds. I love rubies. I really love emeralds. Jody has successfully bid for a rare collection of 18 Colombian emeralds which he hopes to turn into the most ambitious and expensive jewellery Boodles has ever made. It's not the sort of thing in the past that we've ever spent this sort of money on. These stones will become the Emerald Suite, a set of jewellery with a final price tag of over two and a half million pounds. Along with matching earrings, pendant, bracelet and rings, the centrepiece will be a one million pound necklace. An emerald is somehow a little bit more majestic, isn't it? If you think about emeralds, you think of kings of old. Um, there's something quite regal about, about the emerald. There's not a suite of jewellery like this, even on Bond Street, that I'm aware of. It's the next step for us in the evolution of Boodles. Uh, just checking everything's in order. Blossom, absolutely super, a winner. That was a bit faint, I think. What's happened to it? The culture of perfectionism at Boodles starts at the very top. Yep, good. Not, we've got 52 lights, not one out. I like that. 
and the company directors demand the same obsessive attention to detail from their staff, especially when it comes to customer service. We have a certain way of doing things, from the coffee to the champagne, the way we serve the champagne. When a new starter comes into the team, we talk about boodleizing them. There's a certain way that we do things. It's the language we use. Oh, so many different ways of being boodleized. The bow really needs to have boodles showing on the loop as well as on the drop down bits. That's better. The boodle's obsessive streak is even applied to the ritual stuff breakfast. I didn't used to be tidy until I started working with boodles. Just because things are in the right place here all the time, it kind of rubs off and, as my girlfriend will tell you after many arguments, <laughs> I've become slightly OCD at home as well. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it is a lifestyle. Look at that, good egg. I know. That day really good eggs. My father's always saying, don't look at what is right about something, look at what is wrong. Anybody can tell you what's right about it, but what are the problems? So, you know, what's wrong? How can we get the last 5% even better? Nowhere is the need for perfection more urgent than in Jody's latest and most expensive project to date, the Emerald Suite. Sounds frivolous, perhaps, doesn't it? So to spend so much money on 18 stones and a not consider exactly who's going to buy them, but when you see something special, you, 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 know, you have to go for it. With so much at stake, all eyes are on head designer and self-confessed perfectionist, Rebecca. I think something's got to look right. I, I, I mean, I'm the same with other things as well. If, if something's not quite as it should be, I'll have to move it. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, probably not easy to live with. <laughs> She's previously designed some of Boodle's most famous and valuable pieces, including vintage lace, ivy, and sweet pea. But with a million pound price tag, Boodle's wants the Emerald Suite to be their most ambitious ever. It's got to have a saleability about it, yet at the same time be really extraordinarily designed, beautifully sophisticated. It's got to be uh, uncompromising in the way it holds together. Rebecca's been working on designs for 18 months, and today she has to present her top three to the bosses. So, just to summarise, a lot of money, we've got to decide how to mount it. There's two that are based on a peacock motif, so a little bit more abstract with diamonds sort of radiating out. Lorna, do you want to talk about this one? It's also in a peacock motif. For a more of a mega look, so we've got quite a big necklace. Yep. And then that's the matching bracelet and ring options as well. Getting, for me, this is getting closer than this. The third one uh, moves away from the peacock motif into sort of a stylized foliage. Ooh. So the necklace has a sort of asymmetrical composition. I mean, that's boodles through and through, isn't it? You know, they've just come alive, haven't they? Let's keep the others up our sleeve in yeah. case we buy a nice set of sapphires or mm -hmm. anything else in the future. But, um... Jerry, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think it's a no-brainer for me. I think this is just us. It's got our feel, it's sort of, you know, it's our DNA, isn't it? Impossible for most people to make, but we can. I think it's stunning. And the big question, how could we make it any better than this? There's still a decision on the clasp, on the necklace. I think we go for something quite yeah. special at the back with some dropping stones. It's so valuable and so special yeah. But having a, a super duper class yeah. is just a bit of icing, isn't it? Yes. We're going to sell this, we hope, as a suite. Yeah. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Um, if we're all happy, we can't blame anyone if it comes out <laughs> wrong, can we? So uh, we're all happy. All right. I'm confident it'll look <laughs> we're confident. Confident. Yeah. It'll take what? Three, four months to make? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's a major project. Yes. Isn't it? And we'll start on the necklace first. With the emerald design approved, it's now Jody's job to hunt down more show-stopping gemstones to lure top-end customers. Your trip to New York, what's, what's on the agenda for that? I mean, we've got this very big sale going through next month, which will make things look yep. really good. So we'll have a few bob up our sleeve. I mean, you know, something really special. I mean, if you see something really special, I would love another whopper of a diamond. 
you know. Big Ashoka. A big something. What am I talking about? 10, 15 carat stone. You know, mm-hmm. interesting, exciting. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Like but, the 14 carat cushion. In the UK, Boodles has the exclusive rights to sell a unique cut of diamond called Ashoka. Among the claims they make for it is that it's renowned for a sparkle like no other. It is totally unlike any other cut of diamond, and even the untrained eye can see that straight away. It's got a very um, different um, collection of facets. And the other thing is, that is probably about a five carat, four and a half, five carat diamond. Um, it spreads more than that, it's spreading six carats. It looks bigger than it actually is, and you're only paying per carat, but it looks like you're getting more for your money, and everyone likes to get more for their money. Diamonds may be what Boodles knows best, but with the emerald suite, it's the giant green gemstones that will steal the show. Work is underway, and some of the pieces are being cast using the latest 3D technology. But some jewellery is so complex, it can only be made the old-fashioned way. 36-year-old Phil is one of the best craftsmen in the country. He's spent the last five years creating high-end jewellery. It's uh, a big responsibility, I guess, because it's someone's idea and uh, we've got to convey that into a piece of jewellery that's it's going to be what, what they've envisioned. And people look at jewellery closely, so we've got to make it perfect. You can't just make one and say, oh, that's good, I've done that one, I'll make all the rest the same. You have to make each one totally individual. It's a nice challenge as well to try and make everything perfect. He's making the necklace that's the star attraction with over 1,300 diamonds set alongside seven emeralds. It can be quite stressful. These stones are like one and a half million. If you were to drop that and break it, it would be a serious problem. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. With the emeralds in safe hands, Jody needs to make sure he's getting first refusal on more of the biggest and best gemstones on the market. That includes the Ashoka diamonds Boodles are known for, and a New York buying trip is looming. It is a very big challenge. It's knowing what is where, on a, on a diamond or a gemstone level, it's knowing who might have something exciting, or making sure I'm one of the first people they call when they have got something exciting, because these top quality stones do go very fast. Do you ever get it wrong? <laughs> um, I, I think the only way it goes possibly wrong is by paying more than I needed to. <clears throat> um, but not often, I hope not. Thanks very much. Jody is in uptown Manhattan to meet one of the biggest diamond dealers and cutters in the world, Saul Goldberg. He's part of a diamond dynasty so famous, his father even has a street named after him. We're here, we're arrived. Boodle spent years developing a close relationship with Saul before he gave them the exclusive right to sell his Ashoka diamonds. Yeah, this is, I enjoy this, but... Take a look, you know, sky's the limit. Look at that. It's got that sort of Fox's Glacier Mint look to it. Do you have, do you have those over here? Who? Fox's Glacier Mints, the Swedes. No. To navigate the temptations laid before him, Jody must apply Boodle's exacting standards. What have you got there? Just <laughs> sitting on the, on the side. It's exciting, it's a big stone. Two and a half million dollars. Diamonds are graded by the alphabet. Stones beyond the letter H are not considered bright enough to be a Boodle's diamond. But what, that's kind of K- KLM, yeah. is it? K colour. So cool. D F G H I J K. It's beyond where we would choose to have a stone, but it's exciting. It's a big stone. Look what just walked in. Okay. A magnificent emerald cut that we know if we make an Ashoka out of it. Yeah, it's the full hit, isn't it? Is it a It's not dreaming to be an Ashoka? No no it is. Like I mean it's a, no no no. Perfect, isn't it? Jody's made a careful selection of stones with the cut and quality he's after. But they'll only work for Boodles if he can get them at the right price. 15? No. 
No, this is a very... Oh, no, 18 times. I'm giving you... You don't want to go back and forth like that. Can you imagine I'm married into the family for a second and give me a price that? That's a present? Hmm. 100,000 a carat. There's a present. These prices are tricky. Not quite. You know, we've got a great relationship, Saul and I, but I'm wondering why the prices have moved. Because they have moved. Um. I don't know what I was hoping for. So, what about that? And I'll pay, I'll pay for supper tonight. Okay. Happy? They don't. Yes. I, I'm. Yes, it's, it's good. It's good to do. With the negotiations over, Jody's bagged six Ashoka and two pink diamonds. Although he's just spent a million pounds, he hasn't found the whopper of a stone he's looking for. Showdown. <laughs> but Saw's kept something back to last. He wants Jody to see a diamond they've just started cutting. It could become Boodle's dream Ashoka. You can see that it has some imperfections over here. Pushing this way makes you good for an Ashoka. Yeah. Shortening this way makes it good for an Emerald. So once we get it all balanced so out, we can, we can tell what it is going to be at the, at the end. Once cut, Saul estimates this diamond will be 30 carats in weight, with a value of three and a half million pounds. The biggest Ashoka in history was a 40 carat. The next biggest was the 31. So this is one of the, it will be one of the biggest Ashokas ever cut, if it goes that direction. The rough, uncut diamond would be a huge investment for Boodles. But it's clearly captured Jody's imagination. It's fair to say if that stone was available now, that might be the stone I'd, I'd have bought. But I, I suspect it will be the most fabulous stone. Uh, but it's a stone which we need to own, I think. Do you think she'd like those? I think they're quite her. No, they're lovely. I don't think that's her. No. OK. Um, so. Boodles claims to offer a perfectly tailored customer experience. It needs to be quite Is there cool. anything not so elegant? She's got they like to plan for a visit from a regular client with military precision, drawing on every known fact about the individual. The thing is, you want a really high spec. You need like a, a deep flawless. I know. When it comes to looking after our customers, Every single little detail matters. Here we go. It might sound a bit cheesy, but a lot of our customers do become very good friends indeed. So, yes, there is a lot of selling without selling. It is not hard selling. Marta has been coming to Boodle since the 1990s, and over the years, Sloan Street manager, Joe, has built a close relationship with her. Do you think while we're here, we could give these a wash? Yes, of course. We are willing to go that extra mile for them and hopefully that generates loyalty. Do you want to try both? Yes, please. Going the extra mile includes letting some customers borrow jewellery for special occasions. Tonight, I've got a high collar dress, so I was wondering if I could borrow something a little bit bigger than this. Yeah, so some big <laughs> earrings. Yeah. We've got those, but the big version. Well, when I speak to somebody in Bond Street, if you speak to Peter, he's flown out to Canada to deliver a ring to a customer. Um, so there's, there's no stopping us. We'll do whatever it takes. I think so a long lovely. piece is missing from your wardrobe. This is now, you know, I don't know. We're, we're doing a lot more You're with these You're not trying to sell me something, Not right? at all, would I ever? <laughs> <laughs> this no. has it got a, hasn't got a cut, so it wouldn't double up. Their hospitality is very generous. And sure, it's all about business. It's all about ultimately selling at the end of the day. But you'd never feel that. And some of the places I've been to um, with them, some of the venues, were just fabulous. Can I borrow those blue yeah. yeah. It's like a little club. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I'll make sure. We're trying to bat in the first division. We've got to, uh, we've got to try and have managers and salespeople who who can be not on the same level, but can talk the same language as our good customers. They're good with people. They're 
maybe a bit of fun, they've got a bit of charm. We don't want to be dull, we're not a dull firm. What a great job to come in and get paid to sit down, drink a glass of champagne with a good friend, or go out to a great restaurant, or you know, take. Last week I took a, a good customer of mine to the ballet, you know, at the Royal Opera House. It's, it's just, it's not that hard. Jody's back in London, and he's anxious to check on the progress of the emerald necklace with designer Rebecca. Wow, it's shaping, isn't it? Because it looks maybe a little bit heavier in some parts. It'll, it's be, yeah, it's it'll be finer, it's finished. but as a sort of, for this stage, I think it's looking really good. Yeah, that top part, is it a place, if it, if well, it wasn't it was slightly to, moving around, it, it could stick to, into the neck. That curves up like that, so it would bring it away from the neck because it's fitting into that curve, but there will also be quite a lot of joints running through, so it will sit very comfortably. So this stage, I think it's looking really good. Yeah. While Rebecca heads off to make minute changes to her design, Craftsman Phil is working painstakingly on what might seem to be one of the least important parts of the necklace, its clasp. I'm just drilling the holes for the diamonds, for the small diamonds. After a week in the workshop, it's still not complete. If you've got that, a necklace that's worth that much money, you don't want it to fall off. So if it falls off the neck, it landed on the concrete or something, you could smash the stones to pieces. So. So that's why this is really important. If it doesn't work, you have to start again. There's no sort of going back. If the clasp works reliably, it should make an audible snapping sound as it locks into place. Yeah, that was good. Okay, so that will go. That's gonna be, be hidden behind the, the motif design or, or whatever, so we need to make this in a way that works, but then is also invisible with, with the piece. With the unveiling of the multi-million pound emerald suite a month away, Boodles are turning their attention to their high value clients. This is mine. My beautiful nine years of marital bliss. Today, they're lending almost 100,000 pounds worth of jewelry to long-standing Boodles customer, Emma Thompson. Oh, look. That will show off my backhand beautifully. That is gorgeous, isn't it? My diamonds that I have, my Boodles diamonds, I, I love them, you know, and I look at them a lot, and I look at the light bouncing off them in an incredible way. It gives me a lot of pleasure. Does that make me shallow? She'll wear the pieces on a world tour promoting her new film, almost certainly putting Boodles in the fashion press. Borrowing is lovely. It really is. It's a lovely thing to do because it makes you feel very special, but you don't feel, well, I suppose, guilty. But while Emma Thompson isn't buying, Boodles is hosting a very big party for those who are. Every year, the company invites its top clients to the Boodles Challenge, a lavish five-day tennis event. The perfect way to entertain the sort of wealthy customer who might buy their most select jewellery. It's a wonderful setting, Stoke Park's beautiful, and it looks quite a nice day today, so it should be a really good English uh, day out. A year in the planning, it's got all the trimmings, including superstar players. <laughs> Sitting proudly at the centre of the event is the Boodles Gallery, stocked with millions of pounds worth of jewellery to tempt the most discerning of connoisseurs. Sloan Street deputy manager, Claire, has some long-standing clients at the event, including Una, who she's known for six years. Good morning. Did you go for a drink? No. A blossom necklace in white gold has caught Una's eye. Oh, I love that. I think that's absolutely It is. I love it. In the white or in the rose? No, in the rose. It's fab. And actually, rose gold really sits in. Really so you like rose. this and this in rose? Yeah. Let me have a look. Yeah, look, there's the rose gold. Oh, look, the ring, Una. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's 13 and a half. Yeah, the earrings are six. Um, the ring is 12 and a half. The bracelet, I need to check. I think it's about 12 and a half. Yeah. And the necklace is 14. 
14 and a half. Una's interested in the whole suite, if she can have it in rose gold, but the necklace isn't available. After a few phone calls, Claire tracks one down at the Sloan Street store and has it hand delivered to the event. Just checking it, that's the, that's the necklace that basically um, my client wants to purchase. So I've showed her the white gold one, but this is the rose gold, um, which matches the set. Now what I'll probably do is I'll probably wear it and then she'll see, see it around my neck and she'll say, my necklace, and then I'll know. <laughs> Darling. Oh, you are too. Oh, you love. <laughs> a few minutes later, and Claire's made a sale of over seventy thousand oh, pounds. I know, it's brilliant. brilliant. I can't believe you got it. How did you get that? I'm amazing. She's gone for it. <laughs> so yeah, the whole suite she's gone for, which is nice. So rose gold, long necklace, the earrings, the ring, the bracelet, and a little pendant as well. So we're over the moon. She's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Back at head office, Jody has news from New York on the stone he hoped would become Boodle's next giant Ashoka diamond. It's not good. My big stone is an M cut, emerald cut. Still need a bigger Ashoka dot dot dot. Well, we'll get one. This side of eternity would be would be good. <laughs> they don't they don't come out too often. He's he cut that big stone. It obviously I could see it as well, I think, in my heart of hearts. I could see it was looking like an emerald cut. It wasn't quite long enough. So we'll have to keep looking. Or waiting. You win some, you lose some. With the press launch of the Emerald Suite just weeks away, James Amos, the fourth director of Boodles, has called a brainstorm. I see you all. Well organised each year. As the company's marketing expert, it's down to him to find the perfect name for this exclusive collection. It's got to knock your socks off, hasn't it? Because yeah. of the importance of the collection. Yeah, it's got to be a A spring creation. It's too wordy. It's too wordy. It's too, yeah, it's too long. Emerald, Emerald Queen. 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 That's out. Verdant. 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 Who came up with that one? I sometimes think it's a little bit more elegant to have something that's not quite so obvious. Yeah, because it makes people true. want to find out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like rainbow. As, as opposed yeah. to, yeah. You can have the most beautiful suite of jewellery in the world, get the name wrong, and it doesn't create that emotional hook. It doesn't build an excitement around the suite. Is Eden staying in or are we. Sorry, Lucia. It's not an easy process naming a new collection, is it? Before the Emerald Suite is unveiled, Jody and the team have one more party to organise. But this one's different. That can go as well. That I'm going to Bond Street salesman Peter has a customer in Monaco. She's invited Boodles to host a party there to show off her favourite jewellers to her high-flying friends. Those little hoops are gorgeous, the earrings, you know. Yeah, they're going. This is all going. Exactly. For Jody, it's the perfect opportunity. He keeps the high-value customer happy and where better to meet a potential buyer for the Emerald Suite than in the country with the highest concentration of billionaires in the world. She's recently moved to Monaco but knows everybody there, it would seem, and so she's bringing some of her people. We know people in Monaco, but we don't know enough. Um, so it's an opportunity to, to network with new people, to get to know Monaco. The event's been meticulously planned over five months, right down to the last detail. Hi, Michael. There's the menu there. Every one of which has to be signed off by the directors. I, I was actually thinking personally, um, either, well, the lamb or the black cod. I would go for the beef mm -hmm. and um, the, I'd probably go for the lamb, but make sure it's not too rare. Right. I mean, a lot of people do not like rare, rare lamb. Mm. So can we have it m at least medium cooked? Mm. Whereas the beef can probably be a bit more medium rare. Mm -hmm. Wherever we go, we've got to be able to look after the customer and we have to exceed what we say we're going to do, um, not just do what we say, we say we're going to do. Peter's been charged with putting together the perfect collection of jewellery to wow the Monaco set, including a necklace for his client Arbia to wear at the party. This is called the Sweet Pea. 
That's about the nicest sapphire necklace I've ever seen in my life. Its price tag, £480,000. This is going on Arbia when we get to Monaco um, because I know that she's going to really like something like this and it will really suit her as well. It's going to look stunning. So that's going to go straight on. Boodles is pulling out all the stops and the combined value of the jewellery they're taking is £10 million. Pounds. Boodles prides itself on offering extraordinary customer service and they've just arrived in Monaco to throw a lavish party for a top client. God, what a setting! What a setting! You, you could not beat it! 25 degrees, the nicest swimming pool in the world. Um, big do for us, this. Big do. Finding a buyer for the Emerald Suite might be a long game, but Jody thinks this playground of the super rich is the perfect market for their high-end pieces. We're here to do some business. No two ways around it, that's first and foremost. We have some, we have some very important customers coming tonight. I have a marvellous view of Monte Carlo. The co-host of the event is Peter's client, Arbia. I don't think it can get better than that. Here in Monaco, you can wear your jewellery anytime, at any occasion. Even, I mean, you go and drink a coffee and you wear your beautiful jewellery just for a cup of coffee. And that's what I love about Monaco. Arbia is a neurologist but these days spends more time in the sun than in a hospital. Each time I buy a piece from Boodles, you feel special. There is 13 carat uh, sapphire uh, stone, and even the place that you don't see, there's a diamond inside. That's right in the middle. It's, it's the small details, the small details. That's what makes a piece different from another, and that's what makes you a woman different from another woman. With 10 million pounds worth of jewellery to present to Monaco's social elite, Nicholas wants everything to be perfect. We're not quite operational, and a few people arrive early in my experience, and we don't want to look half, half ready for them. There's all sorts of clutter on the floor here. Um, the jewellery isn't all in. We haven't got the displays in yet, but um, we were pushed for time. 10 minute gun, gals, we're nearly there. Last showcase. Last showcase, well you've done jolly well to get it all in. The elite of Monaco are respectably prompt, and the Boodle's charm offensive begins. You know each other already? No. no, no so no one knew anybody no, at all. No, no, That's quite good, isn't it? We're in Monaco. This is where stones end up living. This is 100% the right market for the Emerald Suite, no question. We're looking at very, uh, very affluent individuals, uh, most of all who might have some money to burn. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's a really, really nice ruby. My plan is to get back there, and that's what I'm going to do now. Thank you. Escorted by sales consultant Peter, Arbia arrives wearing the necklace she's been lent for the evening. Hi, really nice to see you. Thank you. Oh, you look stunning too. Thank you. You really do. It's happened. Here we are. Yes. <laughs> but you've already got the most beautiful piece on. I love it. I love, love it. It I was mean, Arby's idea that we came here, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So good. That's really good. It would be really, really better when we sold a couple of pieces as well. <laughs> You're welcome. They are such an, an, a phenomenal business that it's difficult just to be a client. They uh, involve you in kind of an almost a family arrangement. Did I tell you? Uh, no. I had to go back to the airport. I got the wrong suitcase. You had some ladies' clothes. I had lady, all ladies' clothes. <laughs> That's a fantastically soft marketing technique, I think. <laughs> These boys know what they're doing. You, you don't realise you've been mugged until after the event. What are you going to do with the piece? Well, I'm probably going to have it. <laughs> I'm thinking to add it to my collection. I'm, I'm pursuing my husband now to, <laughs> to buy it for me. <laughs> the turnout has been strong and might already have generated some interest in the Emerald Suite. We've got quite an exciting inquiry for a pair of emerald earrings. Thank you. <laughs> On that basis, we're about a tenth of the way to 
selling the necklace and the rest of the suite. Back in London, after four months of painstaking craftsmanship, Phil has completed the million pound centrepiece of the Emerald Suite. It's the ultimate really, to be able to make this type of jewellery, so I will, I will miss it, but I do really like it. Yeah, it does look good. Jody's coming in to inspect the necklace, but is it good enough to get his approval? A little bit nervous, it's obviously their vision, their idea. I'm apprehensive because I want to see it. You know, it's been a long time in the, in the making, and this is the main piece in the collection, so I am nervous. Hey, Phil. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good to see you. How's it going? Good. Great. You're, uh, ooh, here we go. I was about to say, where? Where are we looking? Look at that. Right, OK. No, they're nicely polished. I mean, you might, I don't know whether you've completely... You, yeah, they're, they're fine. I mean, that, the smaller one, Lewis, that claw is nearest to you, but on the top. Yeah. One of those two just looks a bit rough, but gosh, that's... I mean, I'm looking for things to criticise there to come up with that. No, it's, it's stunning. It's stunning. I can spend hours on that and just not find anything wrong with it. It's beautiful. Beautiful clasp, OK, with a nice... Yeah, I really like the clasp. It works really nicely. What we like with a, with a clasp is to hear it click. Yeah. It's got a lovely, you know, engineered feel to it. The first 10 seconds, or probably 20, I was excited about it, um, before then kicking into, you know, what are the problems, and there aren't any, so. That is a beautiful piece of jewelry. Yeah, that's absolutely gorgeous. Well done. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good man. Absolutely delighted. Let's see if we've got to sell it. Three days later, and the big moment has arrived. The Emerald Suite has a new name and is about to be unveiled to assembled fashion editors at one of London's top hotels. Good afternoon, ladies and a couple of gentlemen. Thank you all for coming to what has to be described as the launch of the most exciting and gorgeous piece of jewellery, certainly that we at Boodles have ever seen, let alone made. Boodles Green Fire. <laughs> this suite of jewellery is wow. They are fabulous stones. It's a very exciting, elegant piece of jewellery. It's not brash whilst they're big, important emeralds, we haven't overdone it with diamonds. It's, it's pretty and it's feminine. And it seems Jodie's not the only one impressed by their latest creation. Well, it was fantastic. I mean, not only are they huge, the emeralds are really quite exciting because they have a glow inside them, which is, is quite rare. And you know, this is really, really impressive, not only in craftsmanship, but also to have a product in your store, which is worth a million pounds. It's pretty awesome. Terrific. Terrific. I think the people who are here were, were big players. They were first 11 and they liked it. They liked meeting everyone. Um, we're happy. No, super. We haven't sold it. It'd be even better if we sell it. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, is it in the till or isn't it? For me, I think going forwards, I see a huge portion of our growth coming from single important pieces of jewellery. I really respect what Jody's doing by pushing the investment in higher ticket items. I mean, we're now selling in the course of a year, two or three seven-figure items, and that's quite exciting for us as a company. We've come a long way in the last three years in moving into some really important gems, which will be, dare I say, antiques of the future, where people say, wow, who made that? That's what we're striving for. That's where we're up to. Is that right? Yeah. 